Good afternoon and welcome to uh, our next session of today. It's the last one actually of this afternoon. So I hope you had a lovely break and have enough energy for the next session named Cloud Technology, Why Not? As why should you or why shouldn't you want to use cloud technology for your research project? That's our topic for today's discussion. Now, cloud technology has provided researchers with quick and easy access to computer and storage resources, but it also brings up questions related to costs, data management, and if this technology can be used for working with sensitive data. Cloud technology is, of course, not new, but the adoption of cloud technology for research is gaining traction. Also, the question if research projects should be moved to the cloud is in the forefront of people's mind. In this session, I'm happily joined by a panel of experts in this field who are working on a daily basis with cloud technology. And together, we're going to look into the question from different perspectives. Why should you want to take your research project to the cloud? I'd like to welcome our panel of experts to start with Richard Zoontjes on my right, Program Manager Research at ICT from the TU in Eindhoven. Then on my left, Martine de Vos, Coordinator of Research Engineering Team of the University of Utrecht. And then on my right again, Ivar Janmaat, Team Leader of the HPC Cloud at SURF. And last but not least, on my left again, Bob van Dijk, HPC Advisor for Research at the Amsterdam UMC. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Good to have you here for this interesting topic. And before we start our discussion, I'd like to invite you all at home to participate by answering the following question. For me, the most important thing about cloud technology is... It's cheap and always available. It's better scalable and more elastic than my own computer data center. It's great for collaboration and access to shared data. It's not suitable for sensitive data. Or finally, it's not applicable or I don't want to use cloud technology. By the way, you can ask questions in our chat and there'll be some time at the end to select some of them to discuss with our panel. Now, um, we'll have a look at, uh, at the results in a minute, panel. Um, the cloud and cloud technology can actually be anything. It's a very broad topic. Uh, so what are we talking about when we talk about the cloud? Ivar. Well, for, for me, it's, it's the ability to deploy some of your infrastructure basically anywhere in the world. So, um, yeah, that gives a lot of flexibility because we use yeah, common standards, APIs, and you can program basically anything anywhere in the world. So to me, it's uh, really nice. Right, thank <laughs> you. And uh, Martina, what would you say? I agree with Ivar. Uh, from a researcher's perspective, I would say anything beyond your own laptop. Anything storage. beyond your own laptop? Yeah, storage, compute, anything that you can do remotely. Right, thank you. And Bob? Well, I think I also agree with Ivar and what I see of the, uh, uh, the, of, of the questionnaire that we just said. It's the flexibility, the possibility to, to have your infrastructure as a code, uh, to safely store your data. I think it is safe. I can't hear you it, well to enough. To safely yes. store your Thank data you. and control access to data that you want to share with others. That's right. all more easily done in the cloud. More easily done in the cloud. Okay, yeah. thank you. And finally, Richard. I think it's a very broad term. It's like an umbrella Absolutely. term. It's, it's, yeah. it's very difficult. It depends on what you want. And uh, I, I, I agree with everybody here, I think. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's something that's beyond your laptop, of course. Uh, you have more powerful compute and storage available. But uh, it really depends what you, uh, what you want with it. And cloud. It's, I think it's a difficult term. I think it's better to talk about cloud technology than cloud. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Better to talk about cloud technology, and all the experts agree. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> very good. It, it's a good bridge to our first topic, namely, more and more research is using cloud technology. 
Um, they use it for their projects, but what are they actually doing on all those clouds? Martina, you work a lot with researchers. How are they currently using this cloud technology? Um, what way? They themselves may not call it cloud, uh, cloud technology, but actually it is. Um, they store their data remotely on, in our data management system called Yoda, which is actually a, a cloud for Utrecht University. It's called Yoda. Yoda. Okay. It's uh, your data. It's a data management system. Right. Okay. And they do, sometimes they do computing um, on a cluster in their department or at SURF, which is actually also cloud technology. Um, but I have to admit, admit, still many researchers use their own laptop and I can see why, because then they have full control and it is there and they know how to use it and they don't care sometimes if it takes a bit longer as long as they are in control. And is that a, is that a good thing? I think it can be improved, it can, uh, computing can be faster and Sometimes we see that they have to limit their research question in order to make it um, workable. Mm -hmm. uh, on the cloud, you don't have to do that. And um, also, if you limit it to your own computer, it's hard to uh, reuse it or uh, share it with other colleagues. And in the, the cloud, this is possible. Right, right. Eva, is this recognizable? Um, yeah, I think so. We have... Um also, uh, yeah, researchers who work on their laptop and they have about yeah, a program running for 24 hours, which we can do in half an hour or so on our research cloud. So that saves a lot of time for the researcher. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Richard, you use cloud technology in order to ride the technology wave yeah. and do easy prototyping. For those not familiar with these concepts, like me, uh, could you explain what this means? Yeah, they're very nice uh, terms, so I'll try to explain it. Uh, first, uh, maybe a brief uh, overview of, for example, uh, what, what, what HPC does for science. Eh? The science is getting more and more com computational, and doing better and faster computations uh, has a direct impact for scientific output. Right. And at uh, TU Eindhoven, we devised a lab, we set up a lab to help our educators and, and scientists and students to help them uh, doing better computations by optimizing their applications and also selecting the best fit infrastructure. And doing that, we need uh, a cloud platform to, well, we can use a cloud platform right. to quickly benchmark and also prototype uh, the, the right infrastructure. And by doing that, we can ha have a better informed decision of what we want. So riding the technology wave means that you can use a very new and broad types of hardware where you uh, don't have to always uh, pay it and implement it. You can just use it and prototype your jobs onto that and, and thereby making better informed decisions. Right. Is that something very new? No, it's not very new, no. of course. No, no. But uh, riding the technology wave, I think it's easier to do in cloud because cloud providers tend to have new, the newest stuff and right. you can pay as you go. Great. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. sure. Uh, does it happen sometimes that you try out something and it doesn't work? Of course. Sure. And then you and can... Then, well, then you go to, on to the next solution and you check and you benchmark if that's a better solution. Maybe you want to order something on-prem and then you didn't check it all and, and you just do it and, and you find out in cloud, hey, mm, this might not be the best solution. So it's very nice to have all these different yeah. types of solutions where you can benchmark or prototype on. Suppose you actually bought it and implemented it and it doesn't work. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, I think it's time to move on to our next topic, um, our second topic about costs, data, privacy, safety. Are these cloud technology misconceptions? I mean, Sorry. cloud technology <laughs> provides great opportunities for doing research, but also it raises questions having to do with safety and the data privacy aspects. And in addition, clouds have the reputation that they can be very expensive when not managed correctly. Uh, Bob, yeah. you work I, with I, cloud I, infrastructures I, and I, in the setting of a university hospital. Yeah. Is the cloud safe and can we use the cloud for sensitive data? Well, we are using the cloud for sensitive data. So at the Amsterdam UMSE, we have three levels of confidentiality for research data. And of course, we have to comply with all the rules and regulations and be very careful. Um, I personally believe that an, a university 
hospital network where the clinical and the research domains would be merged would be a much more unsafe situation than having your clinical data in one environment and have your research data in a separate environment, which then can be an on-premises cloud or a commercial cloud. Right. So it makes, I think the cloud, the opportunity to use the cloud, which is flexible for researchers, is a much better solution than working in an academic hospital environment with a closed firewall and frustrated researchers who want to share data, who want to share code, but that's not possible with clinical data. With? Clinical data. Okay. So there will, for research, you always make uh, a separation between the real clinical, personal, re retraceable data and the, the research data. There has to be a wall between both, but the research data, also of a high sensitive nature, can easily be worked with in the in a, in a cloud environment, and we are doing that every day. Yeah. So security, uh, if it's insecure, it would be like a myth then. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. I think you know, I think a lot of on-prem solutions. I've seen a lot of companies uh, would be more insecure than doing it in cloud nowadays. Maybe yeah. back in the days it was a bit different, but uh, nowadays yeah. I think that's the case. Yeah. And also the cost <coughs> perspective, if I may. Add sure. To sure. It. Please. Yeah. Um, I think if you. If you order something on prem and you're not using it, you're, you're wasting money a lot, I think, right? So, and if you use, if you have peak demands, for example, in courses at the university, it would be foolish to to buy something like that and making it idle all the time. Yeah. So, uh, also the cost perspective is it depends. Right. And, and, and there's no one size fits all here. No, sure, Martina. Yeah, yeah uh, I would like to know from Bob. So you're using a cloud solution for? Could you speak uh, in the microphone? Uh, sorry. Please? Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no worries. Uh, you're using a cloud technology for your uh, sensitive da research data. Yep. Which do you use? Yeah, so we in Amsterdam have a number of different cloud solutions at the Amsterdam UMC. Um, one of them is the what's provided by the Andrea Consortium, where also UMC Utrecht uh, <coughs> participates, and Radboud UMC and Erasmus UMC, and since shortly also Leiden and Maastricht is stepping in, so we almost have all the UMCs in the Netherlands now in this consortium. Uh, that environment is completely blocked from internet. So that's where the most sensitive research data can live. Mm. Uh, we also have the Amsterdam UMC Research Cloud, which lives in the Surf Cumulus environment directly. Um, we are that, that for us is at the moment only suitable for mid-confidential data. But it's based on data classification actually where you're going to do yes. things. So, yes, yeah. yeah. So it depends. It depends on the user and it depends on the data. So we always do a, a privacy impact assessment for every project to find which, if you want to use the cloud, which cloud. Yeah, yes, right. Exactly. Yeah, depends <laughs> on several elements here. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Now, Ivar, you're head of the HPC cloud team at SURF. <laughs> And you're aware of the changes in the cloud technology landscape. In the past five years or so, the costs have come down. But cloud technology still has a reputation of being quite expensive. Is this true? Yeah, yeah interesting question, of course. Um, cloud technology being expensive, if you look at cloud technology, it's mostly open source. So and you can use open source for free sometimes. So if you look at it that way, it's, it's not expensive. But what makes uh, it expensive then? Yeah, if you start using the resources on the cloud provider, then it gets expensive. And since uh, yeah, most of the, um, yeah, the owners of the big cloud companies belong to the billionaires of this world, uh, <laughs> maybe we've paid too much for it. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, they also have enormous scale at the moment. So yeah, building something for yourself or just using a little piece of what they created, it's sometimes cheaper, and most of the cases cheaper to use the little piece of what they already created. So it really depends on, yeah, a lot of things, but also on the time, because now I can say, well, it's expensive or it's not expensive, but what about 10 years time or 20 years? That really depends on the business model of the cloud provider. That can change also, and there is no legal basis that limits the amount uh, you have to pay for data traffic 
or for whatever, like we have with, with water, electricity that's regulated. This is not regulated. So I think there, for the next decades, there will be changes in that sense. Um, Could you name a few you well, expect? I, 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 things that I encounter now is, is okay, I need to move a petabytes of data from the United States to here or from anywhere else, and that costs about um, yeah, 300,000 euros sometimes to, ch to move it. Wow. Uh, how much will it cost 10 years from now? Will it be very cheaper? It's more expensive? So there's also some uncertainty, and I think the industry should look at that and, and have some idea of how to solve that. And you can plan uh, yeah, large infrastructures over a longer period of time, because that's basically what we do at SURF. Uh, we need to create infrastructures for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years. Can I ask something? Richard, yeah, sure, please. So, so, well, what do you expect? I think if the cloud providers want to compete, uh, I think the prices will drop down. I've looked at um, a lot. Yeah, you also have business models where you can get in for free, and then after you're all, all is in and all the data is in, they raise the price. So it really depends on the business model of the cloud provider. If there's competition, of course, that will work. As long as competition is disappearing and there will be only a few, then the price can go up. But so I think for this is basically cloud is an infrastructure that we depend on. So some regulation isn't bad, I think, on that part. We're, we're depending the whole, the whole yeah, may, medical data may be on it. Uh, that's really something. So. Yeah, but as, I mean, we all agree that basically the cloud is infrastructure as a code. That's, yeah. that's the technology. So if the provisioners are going to raise the prices tremendously, we will have a lot of on-premises clouds. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that's uh, also yeah. the design of, of research clouds. Uh, yeah. It's, it's multi-cloud, uh, infrastructure as code. So basically, I can deploy anywhere yeah. on this planet. Uh, and th that's, that's the uh, idea behind yeah. it. So if something becomes too expensive, you can, you can move, it some, it. move yeah. it somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, think that's th a nice one to, to say, because cloud technology can be local, right? Yeah. You can have it on-prem, yeah. thereby making it easy to scale some, wherever you want to, uh, yeah. with yeah. containers or whatever. Yeah, and, and I think especially with medical data, it's nice to have some federated way of, of working. So you can do things locally, uh, or you can do it centrally, or maybe, maybe on a European scale. Yeah. Uh, but cloud technology makes it possible. We couldn't do this yeah. 20 years ago. No, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and also, of course, the, the cloud provisioners are all writing to a contract with the OCRE. So we are, we are a very big customer, European researchers, yeah. which also lowers the prices. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's have a look at um, the chat because there's quite some questions that have come in. This one is from Ton. Will there still be a business case for institutional data center facilities in 10 years? Wow. Martina? I think yes. Yeah. I think um, uh, researchers and institutions, they want to be in charge of their own data and also maybe for, uh, for safety uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, I think so. I, I really like the, the option of having uh, several cloud solutions for several types of data and research projects. Yeah. Is that something easy to accomplish? Yeah. Then what's stopping us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, again, it's Time. It ba basically it's just some some code, right? Uh, and the difference being, well, you make you make a, a workspace or a, 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 say a virtual organization with clear boundaries, and you either give it the option to go to the internet or not, but that's just a line of code. Yeah, I think yeah. if you look back, we we had the time where you had the mainframe and the terminal. Then everything moved to the PC, more power on the desktop, decentralized. And we thought, well, maybe Windows Terminal, more centralized with thin clients would be the option. Then we had iPads moving again to the consumer. Uh, so <coughs> having more bandwidth yeah. gives you the opportunity to move things centrally if it's working for you, or move decentrally if it's working for you. And it really depends on the legal aspects maybe, mm -hmm. or where to store the data yeah. that will decide where it's uh, hosted. Yeah. But I do think that boundaries will shift a little bit. So um, 
I'm not sure if there's a big business case for institutionalized tier one or tier two, sorry, tier two uh, mm -hmm. data centers really for uh, institutions because if you can do, what's the what's the difference? Is the location is different? Is somewhere else? Yeah. So that's yeah, I, I think you have a point with, with the facility itself. That's yeah. quite expensive to have a, a, a tier yeah. two or tier three uh, data center on your own premise. Uh, so, so the question is about the data center. And then exactly. I'm yeah. not sure if that uh, is going to sustain like in, in 10 years. So yeah, it's a good you, question, by the way. You could, decide you, maybe to have to, <laughs> <laughs> you could decide to have a few of those yeah. uh, for special needs. Let's move to, uh, to the next question. I also need to uh, warn <laughs> the technical team because I have 5% on this iPad. Um, <laughs> so maybe somebody could uh, give me, top me up. Um, this question is from Jeff. Infrastructure as code works fine, but large amounts of data stored in a commercial cloud is different. You can easily deploy your code somewhere else, but moving your data somewhere else runs into the problem Ivar mentioned. Yeah, that's why we say with Research Cloud, we want to move the processing to the data, not move the data. Sometimes it's easy to move the data, a small set of data, you can move it. But if it's becoming too large to move, then it's better to yeah, uh, run the code next to the data. And mm -hmm. there you have interesting developments, uh, um, yeah, like we have the research data exchange or uh, personal health train. Uh, those are uh, initiatives where you do some compute on the data. You don't know the data. Uh, yeah, you, you cannot access the data directly and you get the results back on it. Right. So that's also a privacy thing that that's for yeah. DNA, for instance, you don't share your DNA, but you may allow people to access it, do some computation on it, and then get the result out of it. So this can be done uh, either for the sake of, because it's, it's too big or yeah. because it's too sensitive. Yeah, yeah. 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 multiple reasons uh, for doing that, and, and you could do a lot. You bring right. the computer to the data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, the, I think, the infrastructure we want to build to yeah. make it that flexible. And with cloud technology, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, I think, thank you. I think um, we can uh, end this topic and move on to the next one. But to summarize this topic, anything is possible but comes at a cost, right? <laughs> More awareness around cloud safety and related processes are needed. Um, maybe we have a question about this topic later, but um, we're going to move um, to, uh, to our third and uh, final part of this panel discussion. Hello. <laughs> so glad you're here. Thank you. Um, yes, but obviously, if you have questions also about this topic, costs and data, please, please share them with us because we're here for you. Um, now, the final part of this panel discussion is about future clouds. What are some of the barriers we need to overcome to make good use of cloud technology? Martina, <laughs> to start with you at the University. University of Utrecht, you help researchers get started on cloud infrastructure. Now, looking into the future, what barriers for using cloud technology do you foresee and what do we need to overcome them? Yeah, so in the addition to all the opportunities, um, I think a, a main thing we need is uh, support for the researchers uh, from people who have expertise and experience in cloud technology. Um, and many times we see uh, researchers, they are very happy when they see what's possible in the cloud. Hey, uh, this uh, took me uh, two weeks or three weeks and now we can do it in half an hour. Um, as long as there is somebody to show them how to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and this take, takes time to uh, educate people and invest in support staff. So yeah. these are the challenges: mm -hmm. time, investment. Yeah, yeah. And I think we all always uh, would need um, special expertise uh, at uh, the University of Utrecht. We are just the first one to go to uh, for researchers. But if we don't know how to do or how to manage the cloud, then we go, for example, to Surif. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I, I can add that. Uh, yeah, I always say, technically I can build anything, but it, you need to have also the contracts in place. Uh, and and yeah, institutions own their own data. Uh, data uh, has maybe personal thing in it, so uh, yeah, the, the DNA data cannot be owned by anybody. It's my data, for instance. Uh, so right. all these arrangements around it, they uh, kind of force technical solutions. 
And if you don't have the agreements in place, you cannot build the technology. So I think we should look into how we solve that, so we can easily move data from uh, yeah, science uh, back to medicine, for instance. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. I mean, the biggest hurdle at the moment is that there are so many regulations that are based on the idea that you have a, a, a central departmental computer or a laptop where your data lives, but that's not how it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's uh, one of the big hurdles is breaking sentiments and myths. Yeah. So about cost and about security, yeah. because these things have changed, but a lot of people in their mindsets are still thinking this is still the case. So cloud is insecure. It's difficult to get data into the cloud. Uh, cloud is expensive. Yeah. And you really have to make a right business case and it depends really on the, the problem at hand that you're trying to solve. If you make the business case right and you present it to the decision makers. And that's why the real well, hurdles, I think, uh, need to be broken with cracking the myths. Right, and who make these business um, yeah, who make them? Well, actually, uh, we at the Technical University, we have the HPC lab, and we try to make these business cases as our request comes in by the scientists. So we try to look at all these things. And uh, there's, for example, uh, a lot of hidden costs if you put something on-prem. We have power, cooling, housing, uh, which we normally don't calculate. And uh, we have to make the right business case and not compare apples with pears. No. So, yeah. Thank you for that. No. Now, one other interesting thing for, with cloud technology is that you can work together. So uh, with cloud technology, you can better support communities to do some sort of co-creation. Right. Uh, and that brings us further uh, yeah, than working all by yourself. And I think that is also something that still needs to be developed. And that is for research, but can also be for education. To really collaborate. Yeah. Mm. Show the extra benefits, yeah. collaboration, uh, yeah, data sharing. Reuse mm. stuff that uh, the community has built, for instance. Doesn't that happen enough? I, I think that it can be done better. Uh, and there are all kinds of technologies. Now we're using a lot of virtual machines, but we could use containers, for instance, to do it, or maybe uh, other technologies that uh, will be there in the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, I don't see the end of it yet. Well, that's uh, positive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm always positive. <laughs> <laughs> what would be an ideal solution for, uh, for us at Utrecht University? Something like the Andrea virtual research environment, that we create a, a virtual environment for researchers to do their research, that we, as a, a support department, um, handle the, the security uh, and the privacy, and also that they, as easily as you pull your credit card, you can just log on with your um, a, a university ID and you can get uh, storage and compute on demand, or you can even use uh, a pre-installed software. You can just be researcher and don't care about uh, exactly. te technology. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but it's not that easy then at well, the moment. I, I, I would love uh, to make that so easy for researchers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's also our goal to make it easier. Uh, and when I I'm, uh, did physics and I had to build my own lab environment in the old days and then people said, well, it's better to have some uh, group doing that for you instead of doing it yourself. And it's the same with this computer and cloud technology. It's better to have specialists doing it for you and exactly. then you can use it. And the specialists can decide on what will be the least cost uh, path from moving the data from there to there. That is not something the scientists should calculate uh, in their research. We can provide it for them. Great. You don't want to have the, the side job of building and maintaining a cluster and uh, yeah. uh, straying away from what you really want to research. Eh? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an advisor for computer environments. I very often get the, que the, the, que the question from the customer, to put it that way, is I need a computer. I always find that such a yeah. Stupid <laughs> question. <laughs> you don't need a computer. I mean, you, you need to calculate something. Exactly. You need to store data or yeah. you want to share data. Something like that. But you don't need a computer. No. Yeah. That's yeah. often they, they, they say, yeah. I want this solution. But then that's exactly why we started at the yeah. HPC lab to, to analyze yeah. uh, more the application side of things and uh, the science yeah. domain questions. And then look onto the best fit on the infrastructure. And yeah. cloud is one of those options. Yeah. And, and more and more, I think we are at the Amsterdam University is still very application driven, uh, but we will become at some point, I'm sure, data driven. Yes. Uh, applications, 
Yeah. Beautiful. Use whatever you want. Yeah. I think uh, there's a lot of yeah. focus on data, and data yeah. management, data classification. Yeah. But I think that will move to the compute part as well. You also want in the compute part the level of security that you can assign to it, yeah. making a real secure environment or maybe less secure for doing maybe DNA for plants or something, which is not uh, very private. Uh, you can choose between those. And I think that if you can only move the data to some locations and maybe the compute to other locations, the whole combination, that's all within a certain security level. Yeah. So it's intertwined. And I think for the next couple of years, we will move more towards compute part uh, and have that better integrated with the data part. So, so, so just to kind of summarize a little bit, there are many different cloud platforms, uh, but we need to think about having this cloud strategy. So which steps, just which steps do we need to take? Uh, <laughs> you mean where to start? Or Work, where working, to start, yeah, where to start. Working together. Is, is working the, together, the, the, the yeah. The okay. step we need to take. Yeah, yeah and we're, we're doing use cases. So uh, we try to um, um, take on uh, uh, research projects and uh, work to uh, collaborate with researchers and try to move their research to uh, to the cloud and see what they need so the use cases they uh, well they come with all kinds of challenges that we couldn't think of before yeah. and that's yeah. great so we build it step by step yeah, yeah sure yeah, yeah, yeah. agile <laughs> agile yeah. working yes we all know the terms <laughs> but it's a difficult question because one size does not fit all no we really exactly have to, uh, look at all the aspects of it but uh, showing success, I think, is the main uh, thing. So uh, if you show people that suddenly they can do large or more complex computations where they got stuck before, and uh, success will sell this. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Uh, or or well, what, what in the medical center, what we often have is there is a data set which is very precious, and uh, they want to share it with others, but they're very, people are very um, anxious that they may lose the control over their data. And that's something that in a cloud uh, fashion is very easy to manage. You can simply give people access to your data, but they cannot import the data or do yeah. anything with it without uh, you that's knowing breaking the what myth. they're doing. That's, yeah. that's like to take away the their anxiety yeah. for yeah. that. Breaking yeah, the myth. exactly, breaking the myth. Yeah. Now I have a question here from Peter. Shouldn't institutes align their policies more with each other in order to enable collaboration, who'd like uh, to answer this one? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, next question. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I think also for uh, privacy officers, uh, it, it would be helpful if there was more alignment. So if researchers go to the privacy officer and ask them to, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, how do I store this data? if there's more common knowledge on how to do it and, and what SURF can do and what they themselves can do. Mm. So, yeah, also information, I think. Yes, more, also more information, information yeah. sharing on that part. Yeah, yeah, especially in uh, an example you just mentioned. Uh, yeah. What if you can just use the data uh, without the possibility of downloading it? How would a privacy officer react to that? Yeah, interesting discussions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have another question from Rob. Will changing from application-driven to data-driven ways of working require a lot of investment in interoperability standards? Fair. Uh, don't think so. Yeah, of course it will. You need to implement it. But I think we are already using a lot of that technology. Like iRods is a technology that we use at Surf uh, that can be very helpful and. Uh, um, yeah, the nice thing about it is if we have use cases, we can really test if it's working the way that we expect it to work. But you could uh, yeah, import data uh, automatically, do some processing on it, really create a workflow for the data uh, that is maybe initiated, uh, the compute steps are initiated by the state of the data. That, that is possible already with the technology that we have. Right. And, and besides... I mean, the, the the rules will be such that you will not be allowed to own your data if you get a grant from the government. No. We we have to share the data anyway. So, uh, so yeah, things need to change to make it easier, but they have to change anyway. 
this has no, that has nothing to do with cloud technology. No, change yeah. needs to be there anyway. Yeah. yeah. You mean change towards fair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and there's one part of fair that is uh, it needs to be accessible, but there's still the thing about the payment. Yeah. Uh, storing your data and especially large amounts of data for a number of years is costly. So uh, th there's also still some work to do in that part, I think. Yeah. Well, there's enough to do, if <laughs> I can hear you. I'm just looking because we have uh, to check if we've <coughs> talked about everything. Um, SaaS. <laughs> Regarding last pass, SaaS, understand we're moving to SaaS. A bigger group of users wants the SaaS solution. Software as a service. Sof yeah, could we go into that? Uh, I think I can, you can divide uh, the user types that we have, for example, in uh, inventors, builders, and drivers. <laughs> and, and, and if you look at a driver, he only wants to, you know, an application interface, and he just wants to put the pedal to the metal and go as fast as he can. <laughs> and, but there are a lot of people uh, who do uh, computations. They want to have more controls and build their own chain workflow. And then you go into the infrastructure as a service model, where I think that... Uh, HPC Cloud is uh, going, uh, but also a little bit in SaaS way, pass way. Yeah, it, it's moving up the stack, yeah. uh, basically. Uh, but you don't want uh, to do everything. The, 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 the way we work is that we have a more federated approach where the institutions can do a lot themselves. So it's more self-service, yeah. and then they can provide maybe the SaaS-like yeah. parts of Research Cloud. We don't have to develop everything by ourselves. With the, because I think the researchers know best what they want better than we do. We only provide the underlying layers there. Don't yeah. that, uh, not always. <laughs> not always. <laughs> yes, not not always. That's, that's not an always. interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want a computer. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's about level of control and uh, about ease of use. So if you have right. a SaaS solution, you have a, a high level e ease of use, but a little bit lower level of control. If you have an infrastructure as a service, you can do a lot yourself. But you, um, you, know, well, uh, you have less ease of use, uh, so it's not a package solution for you. Yeah. Uh, but what, what I meant to say was that I don't know every application that the researchers are using. Uh, I'm glad uh, you some, don't. Now, sometimes I see <laughs> one, uh, no, that's, that's not my thing. No. Uh, so I think that part they should do uh, themselves because they know best. And it's also a limited uh, niche market uh, event. So there are a lot of researchers, but still for big companies like uh, Amazon, it's still a small part of their mm -hmm. business. So it's very good that SURF can help them, and they're very happy with that as exactly. well. Exactly. In, in defining it and defining it with the, 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 yeah, the people who really use it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ivor. I have another question uh, from Sarah. Oh, you wanted to... No, yeah, I want, um, Please. For the university medical centers, we have defined four personas. So we, we see four different types of researchers. User types. Okay. Uh, user types. Uh, Hans van den Berg, our mm -hmm. architect, came up with that schedule and so you have the people who, who just have a limited set of applications and they want to work with that for those of course you need a, a SaaS solution and there's on the up the other extreme typically people with lots and lots of data building their own software they need IIS yeah. and so in between there yeah you can have there's platform of, yeah. yeah but not all researchers are the same no no. No. Uh, no. And, <laughs> and most researchers in a university medical center are of the persona type where they, they know their application. Just give us that application, please. Right. And enough compute. And enough compute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we can talk for, I mean, you can talk <laughs> for hours about this, uh, this topic as it's so broad. Um, but I have, I think, almost a final question looking backstage. Oh, we have five more minutes. This is a question from Sarah. I'm going to take the opportunity here to point out here that we'll be talking about sharing data without losing control, bringing the algorithm to the data that came up in this session in the fearless data sharing across borders on Thursday at 3 o'clock. That's yeah, not a I can recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a colleague of mine, so uh, I can recommend it. Uh, yeah. yeah, have a look at that. Great, great. Um, I think we have like uh, four more minutes to share whatever you want to share about this topic. Like, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe kind of to, to, to summarize in, 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 in a few sentences, to start with Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I've, we, we talked about a lot. Um, 
maybe you could rephrase the question asked earlier. Um, in the coming five years, would university medical centers and universities still need on-premises uh, mainframes? Um, yeah, the, the medical data, I think, will still be there. If I uh, for, for, the research, correct, for research, for research, for, uh, for yeah. research, yeah. Yeah, interesting question. Yeah, yeah um, I think the plan is that we will build some infrastructure to share data between medical um, uh, stories and uh, the uh, research. Uh, and I think those are the questions that we will be addressing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it really depends on regulations, I think, too. Yeah. And, and even yeah. licensing can be locally locality bound. Uh, maybe somebody wants uh, their own cluster just to tinker a lot. That's uh, what, what I would call the inventor. Yeah. So, but it will be, I think yeah. it will shrink. That, that, that's the main, I think, trend that you will see. And then the cloud usage will grow as the cost will lower. Yeah. And as the, the sense of the community, the, 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 the fear uh, decreases. Decreases, the fear yeah. exactly. Decreases. Yeah. Right. Now, what, what needs to happen also is that the, the whole system needs to be audited. So yeah. you, you need to be... ISO certified or NEN 517 yeah. certified, uh, in, in, and you need to look at the, all these aspects, I think. Uh, yeah. um, not for research, but for medical data, you still need something. So those are the things that I said, legally, you have to do some things, you need to be aware of how your organization operates, and it's adjusting to this new cloud environment that, that needs to be done. And what I like about cloud technology is you can still do it on-prem with the same technology yeah. layer, but then you can easily shift towards wherever yeah. you want to be, right? Cloud yeah. bursting is a, oh, yeah. awfully nice. Uh, so that's why it's nice yeah. to talk about technology instead of cloud. Yeah, yeah. 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 But this is, um, it also requires for researchers to make their code, um, yeah, to adapt their code to uh, be able to use yeah. cloud technology, yeah. to port it to other clouds and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then you see technology is rising there because we have containerized uh, technology, which makes it much more portable and easy to calculate anywhere you want to actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and otherwise you're still bound with virtual machines, bound to the local technology that you have. Yeah. So you, technology is, is, is changing and making things more and more possible the last few years. Also an interesting part is, of course, that you want to repeat your uh, research. So having something, yeah, uh, that you can repeat. Uh, it's in a changing technology is sometimes difficult. Uh, have very old floppy disks uh, stuff. Though. So that's also something you need to worry about. I remember you, them. Yeah, if you want yeah. to repeat a research uh, thing from five years ago, is the environment still there to do it? Hmm. Uh, or are you doing it in a different way? Yeah, so in this sense, FAIR and uh, cloud technology really go hand in hand. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, Thank you very much for sharing all your insights on this broad topic, cloud technology. Uh, I hope you at home have enjoyed this as well. If you have any questions for our panel, uh, please ask them and we'll move them forward to them. Now, I'd like to thank my panel of experts, Ivar, Richard, Martina and Bob, and good luck with all the challenges that lie in there and um, have another amazing two days of this research week. Thank you for watching. Thank you.